All right, let the games begin. Welcome to Stretch and Mobility. I am Michaela, I'm one of your group program managers. Um, I'm also the creator of this class. Um, I designed this class just from teaching almost every other class in every studio from um, Pilates and bar to body pump and cut um, all the way to cycle. So I teach all those formats and in my teaching those things, I would just take notice of some of the imbalances that students would have without even knowing they had it or the limitations. For instance, not being able to do a squat without the knees crashing over the feet or um, the hips not you know, sitting back or in cycle class seeing those sharp knee bends and body pump, seeing people misusing their back. So just things like that. So it, it prompted me to form this class and it's one of my favorite classes to teach just because everyone needs it. And I really can't count on you guys to stretch on your own. So here we are. The way we start every class or every block of stretches is by doing a small self-assessment. We are going to start with the outer thigh. Okay, what the assessment does is it gives us sort of a roadmap to where we're going to go when it's time for us to stop, pause, and target certain areas. So we're going to start with our foam roller or foam roller substitute. You're going to set up, I'm set up on my right side. Okay, I'm going to set up the foam roller right underneath me. Bring my hip on top of the foam roller and my body is positioned in a side plank. Okay, I'm down on my elbow because that's the most intense position. You can also come up onto your hands. My feet are stacked. I can also split them slightly. And that top hip is going to tilt down very, very slightly. So we're off the IT band and more on the edge of the quad. Okay, so this is the setup. For the next 25 seconds or so, we're going to keep that position and just slowly walk our way up the mat or same thing as foam roller down the leg all the way to the knee and then we're going to slowly run that roller back to the hip okay so we're just trying to get an idea of where the most tender sore or tight spots are in this particular leg in this particular position on this side okay all right everyone return back to your hip now that you've gotten an idea of where you're going so this is the fun part. You're gonna take a few deep breaths in and out, okay? On your next exhale, I want you to slowly travel down the leg and you're gonna stop at the first point that makes you kind of brace yourself, all right? Stop there. And the name of the game is to stay, stay still right here for about 25 seconds, okay? So we're going to stay light in the upper body and we're going to put all of our force down into the body, into the foam roller. Okay. The way you stay steady or light in the upper body is just to sit up tall. You can also stretch your top arm up and just physically think be light in the upper body. The way that you remain heavy through the lower body is to really press down into the foam roller. Start up that deep breathing again, and the deep breaths help you kind of relax your mind, but it also sends oxygen to the muscles and helps relax them as well. And on your next exhale, you're gonna slowly continue in the same direction, ouch. <laughs> you're gonna stop at the very next point that makes you say ouch, that makes your face grimace, or that even makes you curse me in your head, okay? So hold that. You guys continue to hold if you have the foam roller. If you do not have a foam roller or foam roller substitute, you're going to do the same thing. Make sure your leg is straight and you're just going to dig your knuckles directly into a nice bumpy area. If you're on your foam roller, start that deep breathing. On the very next exhale, I want you to continue in the same direction Okay, and then pause at that next tender area. This is point number three. We're gonna hit six knots on this leg, okay? So every time you pause, I want you to go through that checklist. Is your body physically aligned, right? So shoulders, hips, feet, all in the same line. Is that top hip tilted? Okay, are you light through the upper body? Are you heavy through the lower body? Okay. 
Deep breath in. On the exhale, slowly continue. Nice. Hit point number five. Hold it right there. Again, if you're using your knuckles, it's not gonna be as painful as the foam rolling, but you will be able to feel a lot of that tightness, right? And the longer the leg, the more exposed those knots will be. And when you find one, you're just going to forcefully take your, your, your knuckles directly into that knot. All right, if you're on that foam roller, let's move to point number six, deep breath in. On the exhale, travel and pause. Try not to skip over any knots. Now the goal is to make this a regiment, like make this a part of your hopefully daily activities, but definitely a part of your workout schedule. And so you're gonna just take note of how far down your leg you got in this class. And the goal is for every class for you to get a little lower. These knots don't return overnight. So as we're knocking them out, if we do this consistently enough, we'll be able to travel the entire course of the leg without even stopping, okay? Hold it here, we have a few more seconds. We'll talk when we get on the other side about where these knots come from. And I think it's really important for you to understand that so you can work throughout the day to try to avoid some of these imbalances and tight, tightening activities. Deep breath in, on the exhale, come up off your shoulder, give your shoulders a little roll, okay? And let's switch sides. You can either physically flip or you can turn your back. Either way, we're going to take the next 25, 30 seconds or so to assess the other leg, okay? Now, this is my tight leg. Why? There's many reasons, but the, I know the most glaring reason is that I sleep on this side, okay? So my, the full force of my body weight is resting on this entire side of muscles, shoulders, hips, legs, all of that, and... It's creating tightness because my body is clenched with load on top for hours, hours on end. So that's going to create some imbalance there. You can see it in my body with my shoulders kind of creeping forward when I'm not stretched. And I'm physically stronger on that side because it's, it's you know, battle tested to carry weight. All right, everyone go back to the hip now that you've assessed and created that roadmap. Let's check our form, straight legs, tilted hip, light upper body. Okay, slowly roll down, find your first, see, first knot here. I stopped way sooner on this side, it's so tight. Now, so I talked about my personal, or like my personal kind of journey, why I'm tight on this side. You can start thinking about like what side of your body do you carry your briefcase or your book bag or your purse? Um, do you carry weight on one side over the other when you're standing? Uh, what hand do you use to write more often? Which means that entire chain of arm muscles is probably more active. Do you favor certain sizes or certain areas of the body when you do certain things? And if you start to think about that, you'll start to get a better understanding of tightness and weakness throughout your body. Deep breath in, exhale, continue down, stop at the very next point, okay? Remember, we need to stay still. Why is that? So massaging back and forth or over a knot, that's sort of an instant gratification type thing. It's something that makes you feel good in the moment, but it does very little for your long-term um, flexibility, mobility, and openness. The science behind it, without getting too nerdy on you, is that it takes about 25 seconds for a signal to be sent from your muscle to your brain, back to your muscle, that it's okay for that clenched up muscle fiber to release itself. Okay, take a deep breath in. On the exhale, keep traveling down the leg or keep running your knuckles in. So. These knots are created as protective um, guards against overuse, right? Because I sleep on my side that much, because I put extra strain on this side, 
the body is now sensing that an injury could happen sometime in the near or distant future. So it's going to form this guard, this knot in that muscle line so I don't use it anymore than it wants me to. Sometimes it happens in the opposite way too. Sometimes, keep going guys, take a deep breath in. On the exhale, continue. Okay, so this is point number four. Sometimes maybe we're seated at a desk all day and shoulders are rounded forward and we're stretching forward typing and our upper back muscles are in a constant stretched position. The body senses that some danger may happen from our body just being in that position. So it may form a knot in the upper shoulder or upper back so that you don't misuse it. Okay, so that's where the knots come from. So we have to give your body proper time for those signals to be communicated and for that muscle to say, okay, this is a safe place. I can open back up. I said I wasn't gonna get too nerdy on you. I hope I didn't. <laughs> Deep breath in. On the exhale, travel to point number five. Oh my God, this leg is just ridiculous right now. Um, some of the adjustments you can make to feel this a little bit more if you're not feeling this is to squeeze the glutes and force the hips forward. Sometimes you'll get a little extra out of that. If your shoulder or elbow is hurting, you can temporarily come up onto straight arms. Again, the, the tension or, sorry, the pressure is not gonna be as deep, but this is a good modification so that your elbow or shoulder is just not aching. And then I would encourage you to go back down, okay? So this is point number five. Take a deep breath in, and as you exhale, courageously move to the next knot and I want you to hold that we're here for another 20 okay tilting that top hip is super important because a lot of times people want to stretch the IT band or stretching the IT band is fine foam rolling right and that's a ligament which is not really proper to foam roll that. But when that IT band is tight, it pulls on the surrounding muscles, the hamstrings, the quad. So my approach is to stretch out those attached muscles and the hope is to relieve the IT band, okay? So we're on the quad now. Deep breath in, exhale, release. Give those shoulders a roll to the back. I get the question a lot how often you should do the class. I'm gonna tell you, I think that this should be done on a daily basis, but if not, at least four to five times a week. Think about how much, first of all, daily activity, just not even gym exercise and workouts. The things that we do, the positions we fix our body in for long periods of time. So it's we need to undo that, just baseline, keeping flexible, keeping stretch, keeping balance. But then we add on the rigor of exercise classes and that like ups the ante. So however many hours that you spend doing rigorous, intense, like workout activities, you need to do an equal amount of time stretching. So whatever that means to you, you can kind of figure that out. All right, foam rollers aside, if you have lacrosse balls, if you don't have a lacrosse ball, you can keep your foam roller. We're gonna move to the calves now, okay? Remember the calf is a smaller, more rounded area than the quad, so I'm using a smaller rounder device if I have it. If you don't have a lacrosse ball, you can just use your foam roller the same way. Okay, so I'm gonna take this lacrosse ball and I'm gonna sit it right underneath the thickest rear part of my calf, okay? So all I'm gonna do is spend that initial time just kind of, kind of rolling my calf muscle into this ball. Now, I know most people think that the calf is really just the back of this area here, but it wraps around the side, the outside and the inside. So as you are exploring this calf, I want you to take a few seconds to turn the toe out, see if there's any tightness in there, and then even turn the toe in and I think you'll find some nice little surprises. I found one right there. So continue to push down into this ball. Again, you're creating a roadmap because in a few seconds, I'm gonna ask you to land on one and hold it for that 25 seconds. And you're just gonna pick the most intense knot that you're exploring right now. Okay, so take a deep breath in. On your exhale, 
find like the most intense knot. I found a really good one right there. Okay, you can add more tension by taking the free leg, crossing it on top and forcing the top leg down into the bottom one. You can even use your hands and arms to lift your hips and then force your legs down. And we discovered this in class some months back. You can also just physically lay down and force that calf into the ball. Either way, we have 10 more seconds. So hold it nice and steady. Good, that feels like that hurts so good. It like hurts so I know that there's something going on in there, but geez. All right, take a few deep breaths. And on your next exhale, travel to another one of those knots that you found when you were traveling. Okay, like I said, I teach a lot of body pump classes and we, a lot of the moves we do in there, um, make it so that the inner part of my calf is just super tight. In the last release, we did a lot of like calf raises um, and the toes came in. So that actually is very logical that I have some tightness in the inner calves. We're here for another 10 seconds or so, guys. So press down, try to keep the, the pressure really targeted into that one knot. Take a few deep breaths and on your exhale, find another good knot. Find it and then hold it. Don't be afraid. If it hurts, you need it. Right. Now, in the course of us releasing one area, I want you to not undo, a, you know, some other things up top, or I don't want you to overly stretch up top. So I even caught myself just now kind of cringing up top. So I had to force myself to open up. So try to keep the shoulders open while you're releasing the, the lower part of the body. Go ahead and press down, give it a few added pushes and on your next exhale find one more spot in that calf we're going to spend four trips here and this is the fourth knot so once you find it hold it oh my goodness these calves these calves poor little calves <laughs> now if for some reason you're not feeling the pain that I'm feeling because maybe you did a great job at stretching out this area, or maybe you just don't need it. First, you can always switch sides before I give you the cue. And then you can also switch body parts. So for instance, if you knew you were really, or you discovered you were really tight in our first round of, um, we call it SMR, self myofascial release, and you're not as tight in the calves, you can always kind of nix that and go right back to where you know you need it. Okay, deep breath in. On the exhale, let's switch legs. Let's spend the next 30 seconds or so exploring this leg, rolling around. And don't take it for granted that this leg will have the same effect or you know, will be affected the same way as the first leg. Like right now, this calf is not nearly as tight or as painful to roll into as the other leg and so what I would do with that if I couldn't find any knots in this and I I'm sure I can find one because I'm just that tight but if I couldn't now when I'm done exploring I probably would go back to the other calf or go back to the outer thighs and you have that option as well okay so take a few deep breaths as you're rolling around I uh, got one and on the next exhale Find one, go stationary, add pressure down into that knot, and let's hold it for the next 15 seconds. Good, really press down, don't move, don't massage. You gotta kinda own this and live in it. And, and just understand that it won't be painful this way like every time. The more consistently you do this, the more subtle the pain will be. And at some level or at some point, this won't be painful anymore because you would have done the work and you would have created that general flexibility and openness. Deep breath in, on the exhale, find point number three in this calf. 
Ooh, good one. Ah, it's a good one right there. I'm turning my toe in. I'm hitting, hitting the inner, the lateral calf. I'm sorry, the medial calf here. Ugh. It's right on the inside. I have about 10 more seconds. So do you. Press down. Okay, three seconds. Do a few, take a deep, few deep breaths. And on your exhale, go ahead and find one more good knot. I found one up toward the knee. That makes a lot of sense. So the knees and the hips, they endure a lot of movement throughout the day. So all those muscles that are attached to the knee and the hips, you can find a lot of trauma there, right? And then the ankle sort of secondarily. But um, remember those knots are a signal of some trauma either happening or forthcoming. So you can predict where that tightness can be if you just think about how you move the body, right? We move the elbow a lot. So a lot of times you can sniff out some knots in the biceps and triceps. We move the shoulders a lot. So you can sniff out a lot of tightness in these areas. Deep breath in. On your exhale, we check the calves off the list. We're gonna move to the glutes now. So again, think about all the activities you do in the course of the day and how involved your glutes and hips are. So we're gonna find some good trauma in there. What I want you to do is take the ball and I want you to sit one half of your glutes, one side on this ball. If you have a foam roller, you can do that. Um, and you're just going to roll around and explore this big round gluteal muscle. If you don't have any of these devices and you're using your hand, what you're gonna do is lay on one side and you're just going to run your knuckles in your glutes in a circular motion, okay, right? Find some good stuff out there. So keep rolling around on your ball or your foam roller. Again, your glutes are rounded. So the round ball is going to probably serve you the best if you have options. Otherwise, foam rollers work as well. Okay. If you want to go a little higher up toward the upper back, you can lay lower and just kind of sink your weight in. If you want to go lower toward the hamstring, you roll up. Either way, now you have your mat. So I want you to go in the area of the first or the most painful knot. You're on one side. I want you to take the opposite leg, cross it over the leg that you're on. Go ahead and dig into that ball. And when you find a good knot, hold it. We're here for about 20 more seconds. Remember, just like the calf, the glutes wrap around the hip. So the, the biggest part, yes, is <clears throat> in the rear of the body, but you have some, um, well, gluteus, medius, and, um, and minimus. They wrap around the side. So we wanna make sure that we kinda tip, twist, and turn on the side as well. Take a deep breath in. On your exhale, try to find another good knot. Whoa, found one right there towards the center, going towards the tip of the spine. Oh my goodness, jeez. <laughs> like I said, it hurts so good. And in the beginning, I said I kind of crafted this class for you guys, but trust and believe this class is very much for me as well. Um, as a person who teaches so many classes, I have, or. I don't create not nearly as much time to kind of serve myself. So I'm, I'm really excited to actually do these home workouts because I have to do this myself in regular class. I'm spending so much time walking around correcting you guys that I don't even get to enjoy it myself. So thank you guys for allowing me to partake in this. I need it. Deep breath in, exhale, Woo. find the next knot. This knot here is intense. I don't know if any of you feel this particular um, release that I do, but Lord, <laughs> it is something special. 
So we're gonna do uh, two more knots on this side. We're on point number three. 10 more seconds at this particular location. Okay. Think about the shape of your glutes as you're about to travel to your next spot. Think about hitting that entire area, that entire muscle, deep breath in. Exhale, travel. Okay, find a nice new intense spot. We'll stay here for another 20 seconds and then we'll hit one more knot before we switch sides. Hold it. Remember when you're feeling that really intense pain or strain, use your deep breathing to relax not only your muscles, but relax your brain. Those cleansing exhales really do, um, do you a service. Deep breath in, exhale, travel. I'm gonna go all the way down toward the hamstrings. Oh, nothing there, let me go to the outside. All right, hold it. If you're focused in on the, more of the outer thigh, you can actually physically turn onto your side and just kind of lay all of your weight into it. And I think the, another cool thing about this class is that everybody's body is different. Everyone's body is different. So you can kind of lay out and really find these creative body positions to really hit the spot that you need to hit. Okay, take a deep breath in. On your exhale, let's switch. Take the next 25 to 30 seconds exploring this side. Always keeping in mind, keep in mind that you can always go back to an earlier stretch or an earlier body part, okay? It's uncommon for people not to feel this one though, but if for some reason your glutes don't have the trauma that my glutes have, then you can always go back to the calf, the quad. We're gonna move to the shoulders next. Shoulders and uh, back and chest. All right, now you found some good knots. Time to add pressure into them. So take a deep breath in. On the exhale, cross the leg. Press as much weight as you can press into that ball. And then when you find a good painful knot, hold it. Keep it still, keep it stationary. You need to show a lot of patience in this class because you're gonna wanna move. It's only normal to not wanna sit in pain. It's a normal kind of reaction to pain. Okay. Hold it for another 10 seconds. For the last 10, I wanna see if you can press any deeper into that ball and really knock it out. Start your deep breathing again. And after a few of those, exhale and travel to a new spot in your glutes. This is point number two. We'll do three more trips after that. Now I've removed my top leg only because for the specific area that I'm on right now, it just helps me to have both feet anchored to the floor so I can really get in there. Um, so I suggest the leg on top for more pressure, but if you find that removing your leg helps you get to another place better, then do it. It's, you have maximum flexibility, <laughs> pun definitely intended. You have maximum flexibility to do what you need to do to get the stretch that you need to get. Okay, on your next exhale, travel to point number three. Woo, good one right there, a lot of my tightness happens in the upper region of the glutes. And um, I won't go into why that makes sense to me, <laughs> but it makes perfect sense. All right, hold it. We're here for another few seconds. Take a deep breath in on your exhale, travel. Okay, this is point number three. Really sink into that. 10 seconds here, hold it nice and steady. If it's starting to kind of feel easier or better, I'm gonna challenge you to sink more weight into there. Okay, 
On your next exhale, travel to point number four. Sometimes you don't even have to travel much. Like just now, I moved probably like a, a millimeter, a centimeter or something, and I found a new painful knot. So sometimes you can travel big and sometimes you can just travel small. But as long as you're knocking out these knots, I won't nitpick. We have 10 more seconds here. Okay, hold it. Take a few deep breaths. On your exhale, travel to point number four. When you find that good spot, that spot that makes you grimace, or say, ouch, that's your spot. You're gonna hold it. <clears throat> good, sink all that weight right into that muscle. So I do a lot of squats in my class. I do a lot of leg work in like every one of my classes. So my lower body has the tendency to be jacked up. This class is just so great for it though. That's why we actually start with the legs. Deep breath in, exhale, find one more good spot. Ah, that one right there, did you hear that? Ah. <laughs> that was my signal that I got a good one. 15 more seconds here, hold it. Excellent. So it's really important that we always, that we start with the, <clears throat> the self myofascial release. That's anything that targets the trauma zones. Okay, so come on off. So we always wanna do that. And what we do in doing that first is we open our body up to now active and static stretching. And that's one of the reasons why this is also good as a complement to yoga. Because I think people think yoga flexibility and that's great, but that's more, more likened to like active and static stretching and in positions. This type of work, this release, helps you get more benefits out of that active and static stretching. And it, it makes those gains go a lot further versus feeling good in that class in that moment. And then once you leave, your body kind of reverting back, right? All right, let's move to the upper body. Since we're already in this position, I want you to just lay back. If you have a foam roller, lay on it. I'm gonna keep the ball because again, these are rounded areas. And we're gonna just pick one half of the back, the upper back, and you're just gonna start to roll your way around on this ball. If you have a foam roller, you guys continue on there. If you have a foam roller, oops, you're gonna lay on it, and you're just going to kinda raise your hips and roll up and down the back. Try to keep your shoulders retracted and open and really dig in there. Okay. If you don't have any of these devices, I want you to imagine that someone or you yourself is giving yourself a massage and use your hands to dig into that area. Spend a few more seconds and when, when we get there, you're gonna find one of those really good knots. You're gonna raise your hips and you're gonna hold the position, okay? Take a deep breath in. On your exhale, find something really good. Raise your hips and push the weight of your back into that ball. Try to release those knots. You guys keep going. This is a very, very important area to de-traumatize, I say. Keep going, hold the position. So think about it. Most of us, or many of us, at least for a few hours a day, are like this, right? And without us knowing the shoulders are rounded forward, the back is in an overstretched position, it's pulling on the neck and the shoulders in a weird way and the lats, okay? So there's trauma there. So it is no wonder that when we do this ball work and this foam roller work that we feel some things going on. Also, a lot of us carry stress in the shoulders which pull on the back. So you'll see shoulder, your shoulders hanging up like this, or um, just kind of creeping forward or the, the neck protruding. Take a deep breath in on the exhale, travel, find another good spot in this area. I normally find some good spots going up right below the neck, not onto the neck. 
and in toward the spine. There's some pull there, but again, everyone's body is different. So you may find some really good points in a different area of your body. My shoulders definitely creep forward if I'm not thinking about it. So uh, this ball is right in the rear delt or the back of the shoulder. Let's hold it here for another eight seconds or so. Good. Okay, let's find one more knot in this area. If for some reason you're not affected by this, you can also try to dig in the lat. The lat is in the underarm area. Okay, and um, you can just kind of roll around in there. Otherwise, if you're tight in the upper region like me, I'm staying where I was, right there. Okay, another five seconds, and then we're gonna switch the ball to the opposite side of the shoulder and back. Deep breath in, exhale, and let's switch. Take that initial 30 seconds to kind of roll around and explore. If you already know where the tightness is, you can just get an extra round of release in. Good. Right there, yes. Oh, feels so good. Okay, take a deep breath in on an exhale, settle in on one of those areas. You raise the hips to send all the weight down into the upper part of your body and into the ball. You could do this with the hips down, but then you'd have to force, you know, do more of the forcing yourself. Hips up makes it more of a thoughtless process. So let's hold it here for another 10 seconds. Very good. Hold. All right, on your next exhale, travel to one more good but, and let's hold it here for about 25 seconds. Remember you have the lats as another option as well. Good, hold it. 10 more seconds here. And just kind of let your body relax and release into the ball for three two, and one. Okay, keep your ball. I just want you to lay out. Everyone's gonna lay out. You're gonna open up your arms to the side and your hands should physically be lower than your shoulders. So I don't want them up here. I need them physically lower than your shoulders. Your palms are up and you're just gonna lay we're gonna be here for a little while, about a minute and a half, and all we're doing is using the flatness of the floor, the weight of gravity, and the ease of our breath to try to create balance between the chest and the back. We just talked about the shoulders rounding forward, which means that the chest is contracted in an undue way. So right now, with each breath, I want you to try to let the shoulders open up, like let gravity push down in the front of the shoulders. Try to let the shoulder blades melt into your mat and just allow your body to take the shape of this floor, which is flat and balanced. I kept my ball because I'm gonna use it in a second. So if you have your ball, keep it and ju just let it rest in your palm like an Easter egg in a basket. <laughs> All right. Close your eyes and we'll stay here for another 20 seconds. Just relax and give in to the stretch and the body position. Ten more seconds. Five, four, three, two, and now after one, you're gonna take the hand that has the ball in it. You're gonna place the ball 
right into this, the opposite shoulder. You have an open palm and you're gonna roll this ball in and around the front of the shoulder and the chest. Keep going. If you guys do not have a ball, you can take your knuckle while you're laying and you can just massage your knuckles down and into the shoulders. I'm gonna show the stretch upright for those of you who couldn't see me when I was laying and here's the motion that you're doing. The palm is open, the shoulders are retracted. I'm pressing down into the uh, shoulder area and then the chest. And then I'm doing that in a circular motion. Feel free to explore that entire half of your chest shoulder area. You can even go down into the lats. And what we're doing here is just getting an idea of where we will stop in a few seconds and where we will apply force into. Okay, this shoulder um, release is the last set of release we'll do with the foam roll in the ball. We're gonna go into some active and static stretching thereafter, so stay with me. All right, keep laying down, stay open, take a deep breath in. On the exhale, find one of those good knots and forcefully press this ball into that knot. Again, I am upright so that you guys can see me, but this is going to work way better with you laid out chest up, shoulders back, exposing those knots, and now counteracting it with this ball. Good, roll around some more, travel to a new area. You can go on top, you can go on the outside, you can go underneath, either way, find a new knot. And when you do, press that ball firmly into your chest. So while you're laid out, the arm that you're, or the, so, the side that you're rolling into, that arm should still be flat against the floor, palms up. And again, we want those, nut, those um, knots to kind of rise to the top. All right, hold it. We have eight more seconds here, and then we're gonna switch. Deep breath in. On the exhale, stay laid out. Spend a few seconds running this ball in a circular way, in and around the front of the shoulders, on top, into the chest. The ball rolls a lot better with an open palm. So it doesn't work as well with clenched fingers. All right, just let that ball roll. Take a few more seconds. On your next courageous exhale, find a good knot. Apply constant pressure down into that knot for the next 20 seconds. You guys are doing good. I can tell, I can feel it. All right, 10 seconds here. Remember to keep the palm open and the arm as long as it can, it can remain. All right, roll around, find another good spot in this area. And then when you find it, hold it. Good. Nice and patient here. We're here for another 20 seconds. If this feels pretty okay, go deeper. There's always ways to make it not feel okay. <laughs> All right, we have eight seconds. This is a good knot for me right there. Feels so good. Deep breath in, exhale. You can put your foam roller ball or knuckles aside. All right, let's go into, let's start. We didn't do this last week, but let's start with our inner thigh and upper body stretch, okay? We're going to set up the knees super wide. Now, I like to do this on like a hard floor and I, and I can go wide enough for this not to hurt my knees. But if this position hurts your knees, just make sure you keep your knees on your mat, okay? So what I'm gonna do is open up my knees. I'm gonna take the laces of my shoes or the top of my feet and pin them down into the mat. And I'm gonna start upright, okay? So my shoulders are roughly over my hands. My knees are roughly in line with my hips. And I'm just here, okay? I want you to brace yourself 
with your arms, so hold your weight up there. And on the next big exhale, I want you to try to separate your knees even more. So open up the inner thighs, open up the hips, okay? All right, take a few more deep breaths. On the next exhale, keep your knees, keep your hands, but shift your hips back toward the heels. So nothing else moved except for the hips sitting back on the heels. Give your body a few seconds to process this new position and take a new series of deep breaths. On your next exhale, keep your knees, keep your hips, keep your hands, but retract your shoulders, pick up your chin, dip your back. Hold it here. We're sending force and stretch through the hip complex into the inner thighs, then sneaking some stretch into the shoulders and chest. Take a series of deep breaths. On my cue, you're gonna go down onto your elbows. In that moment, the knees and the hips stay put. The only thing that changes is your arm position. So on your next big exhale, send your elbow straight down in the position that your hands just were, or your hands just left. So my shoulders are right over the elbows. My knees are still wide. My hips are still back, maybe. <laughs> Most of your hips probably came forward, which is a natural response. So don't worry, we're gonna send them back. Take a deep breath in. On the exhale, first see if those knees will go wider. So keep your hips, keep your elbows, see if the knees will just separate without anything else moving. Now, keep the knees stationary. Keep the elbows where they are. But on your next exhale, see if you can take your hips back to where they were, going toward the heels. Hold it. All right, keep the body position. Everything stays the same except for shoulders, chest, and neck. We're gonna lift those. Okay, each one of these little adjustments that we're making is taking the stretch a bit deeper. You always have the option to stay where you are and not pass go, okay? I encourage you to pass go, but you don't have to. Okay, keep your hips, keep your knees. On my cue, I'm gonna tell you to take your arms, both of them forward. So take a deep breath in. On your exhale, keep the lower body where it is. Take both arms, straighten them out. Okay, so you start tense because your body is just like clenched up. But using a few deep breaths, I want you to try to allow your body to sink down toward the mat. You're feeling tension in the groin area, in between the legs. So I want you to take your deep breaths there and try to relax on every exhale, try to relax that area. On the next exhale, let's see if the knees will go any wider. Don't move anything else, just the knees. On the next exhale, see if the hips will drag any closer to the heels. Try not to move anything else, just the hips going back. On the next exhale, let's see if we can stretch the fingertips any farther forward. Again, the hips didn't move. The knees didn't move, just the arms got longer. On the next exhale, see if you can touch your stomach to the floor or at least get closer. Now, same thing with the chest. Can we bring the chest to the floor or closer? How about the underarms? Can they get closer to the floor? Give it a try and wherever you land, this is where we'll be for the next few seconds. Really use your deep breaths here to relax because I know this is tense. And on the next exhale, slowly come back onto your elbows. 
And now slowly come onto your hands. Separate the feet. Dig the toes into the floor. Slowly straighten the legs. Plant the heels. Keeping the legs straight, you're gonna walk your hands up into your legs and gently pull your chest into the space in between your legs. Good, hold it. Hands back on the floor. Go ahead and bring your legs back together. You're gonna walk back out. Gently bring the knees on the floor and just kind of give me a loose child's pose. All right, knock that one out. Very good. Grab your towel. You're going to turn on to your back and we're going to wrap, fold first, but then wrap this towel around the foot. I'm not going to micromanage how you fold your towel, but the one, the way that works best for me is to fold it like a bandana flat fold it and then we'll lay on our back. We're going to wrap the towel around the front portion of the foot. So in between the ball and the toes. And I'm not forcefully pulling on this towel. What I'm gonna do is just use my pincer grips to grab the bottom edges of the towel. I have my right leg up, my left leg is just kind of slightly bent but lay down on the floor. I'm actually gonna use my foam roller to prop my head. If you have a pillow or something that you'd like to use to prop your head, you can do that. Okay, so right now, I'm not aggressively pulling on the towel, but what I do wanna do is use this towel to help me pull this leg into a vertical space. So we don't wanna pull the leg into the chest. First of all, that's too much for the hamstring right now. And that, that kind of lets the hip flexor take over. I want the heel of the foot right over the hip and I wanna see a perpendicular leg um, to your chest. All right, so once you have that nice, straight vertical leg, let's go for a flat knee, relatively flat knee. So you can do that two ways. By either like just sending your kneecap away from your arms and or pushing up on your heel. So sending your foot through the towel, but following through on the heel. Use deep breaths to do that. So if your leg is like permanently bent, first of all, loosen your arm grips. Take a deep breath in and on every exhale, try to flatten it some more. Keep doing that until you get as close to a straight leg as possible. If you have a straight leg, just hold it. Now, if your knee is still bent, you can't go straight. I do not want you to pass go. I want you to spend however long you need to spend going straight, all right? Because it makes no sense for us to stretch a tight leg or to reinforce a tight leg, all right? Okay, if you're straight, I want you to flex your ankle. If you're not straight, you're continuing this line. I don't want you to flex your ankle until your leg is straight, okay? So you're gonna flex the ankle without pulling on the towel. And what we're doing is allowing the body to create balance and length on its own without the real use of an outside force, this towel. We only want these accessories to help take us further. But if we can create the type of stretch and balance that we need on our own, we're gonna teach the body the good habits of doing that all the time, okay? So now that we're straight, we're vertical, and we're flexed at the ankle, now we can use this towel to add more intense pressure. So you're gonna pull down evenly on both sides of your towel, pull down, hold it here. Same goes, we're gonna apply this for about 30 seconds. We've already done 15 at this point. So keep pulling down. Good, now I want you to pull down a bit harder on the outside. So if my right leg is up, I'm pulling down harder with the right hand. I'm not gonna let the left hand go. I'm just pulling harder. While I'm pulling down on the towel, I'm forcing my hip up. 
I'm keeping my knee flat and I'm just breathing through whatever tension or strain I feel here. We're gonna hold it here for another 15 seconds. We're only gonna do one round right now, but you should always feel free to replicate this as often as you want. This is an IT band stretch. Remember we talked about this earlier. While we don't foam roll that area, we actually do stretch that area. It's a it's connecting like the knee and the hip. So it, it gives a lot of a lot of work and a lot of wear. It's important for us to stretch it. Go ahead and release the towel. Okay, roll the ankle. Reverse. Gently pull the knee into the chest. Hug the knee into the chest and stretch out your glutes and your hamstrings. Take your knee out to the side. Try not to roll, so keep both hips flat on the floor as you do that. And now take the knee across. Let's try that towel stretch on the opposite foot. Okay. All right, relax the free leg. Relax your grips on the towel. Go for a straight leg from hip all the way through heel. If you're feeling the shake right here, first of all, kudos to you, you're doing something right. Second of all, you needed this stretch like 10 years ago. <laughs> all right. All right, we're going for that straight leg, that vertical leg. Use your deep breathing to get there. Okay, once you're there, flex the ankle. Do that without pulling on the towel. Excellent, keep it there. We'll add the force of the towel in a second. Just give your body a few extra seconds to get used to this position and to stay long and to teach it that it's okay for us to be like this in this way. Okay, after a few deep breaths, I want you to pull down on that towel. Try not to alter any other body parts. So don't let this foot kind of creep out. Keep it upright. Try to stay balanced. Pull down and those toes should be kind of looking at you. Pull them down. If you want to take this deeper, you can cross your towel, shorten the levers and pull down. You can use a shorter towel to get more intense. You can use a longer towel to be more modified. We're here for another 15 seconds, pulling down. Don't lose the vertical nature of your leg and don't lose the straightness of your leg. All those little details matter as far as this targeted stretch is concerned. Okay. Pull a little harder with that outside hand. My left leg is up, so I'm pulling harder with my left hand. I'm not relaxing the right hand, I'm just pulling harder with the left. We're here for another 15. One more stretch after this, guys. And then you can go, you can go live life to the fullest. <laughs> All right. Slowly remove that towel. Go ahead and roll your ankle. A few rotations in each direction. Gently pull that knee into the chest. Take the knee out to the side. Pull it across the body. Try not to let those hips tilt as you move the knee. Excellent. Okay, let's come on up to the feet. Bring your towel with you. We are almost done, I promise. Again, we're only gonna do a few rounds of this towel stretch, but you should feel free to do this as many times as you want, as often as you want. You can even take your towel back to work with you when we go back there and do this in your seat. Okay, so we worked on those shoulders. We talked about the shoulders a little bit. The goal of this is to keep the arm straight and to wave this towel about the head so much that you could get full rotation out of your shoulders without bending your elbows. That's the goal. That's not the requirement today. So let's, let's do this thing. Go ahead and flat fold your towel. Okay. 
You're gonna start with stretched out arms right at the chest line. Each time I give you the signal, you're going to raise your straight arms up two inches higher. You're gonna stop at the point where your shoulders just say, uh-uh, no more, you stop there. Or if your elbows start to bend, that is your signal to stop. Do not keep going if your elbows are bent. Okay, ready? Deep breath in. Tight glutes, tight abs. On the exhale, shift up. One, keep going. Two, three, raise it. Four, keep going. Five, if you can. Six, if you need to stop, just hold. Keep going. Seven, keep going until you have to stop. Okay, once you're there, I want you to pull the arms away from the shoulders to so give me straight arms. We want to put the load of this stretch on the bigs, the glutes first. Squeeze your glutes. That's going to make you taller. Engage your abs. That's going to make you straighter. You're going to squeeze your shoulder blades together. That's going to open up your chest. And you're going to pull on the towel. Take a deep breath in. On the exhale, release forward. Roll your shoulders back. Okay? So that's one way to do that. The second way is to swing. Okay, so each time I say swing, swing the arms up. Again, stop at the line where your elbows bend. Ready? Deep breath in, swing. Come back down, swing. Two, and three. Straight arms. Four, I want you to pull the towel at the highest point. Five, and six. Open up. Seven, hold it at the top at eight. Same thing goes, pull the towel apart, wing the shoulder blades together, engage the abs and glutes. See if you can go any further. Let's hold it here for three seconds. On your exhale, release forward, roll your shoulders back. So we only did a few rounds, but for the leg work, I would suggest at least two rounds on each leg. For this, I would suggest at least four rounds, okay? But for right now, our time is done. So, in true stretch fashion, open up the legs slightly, take a deep breath in, stretch wide first, high second. On your exhale, scoop loose and low. Good, open up. Come on down on your last exhale. Bring your arms down the center. Give your body a rub. Tell your body it's gonna be okay as it is. <laughs> Have a great day. Thank you for joining me for today's class. I look forward to seeing you next time.